Hey guys, so uh, with the seventh anniversary of Dokkan coming up on JP, I decided that this is another good time for me to uh, do another one of these concept videos. The last time I did one of these, I believe, was for the 350 million download celebration with the Namek Goku and Full Power Frieza. And uh, the seventh anniversary, I would imagine, is probably going to be the best celebration of all time just because, you know, Dokkan with their sevens and stuff like that, they've had a pretty... Uh, <laughs> A pretty good history with having seven. Seven is a pretty big number for the game. And um, yeah, so I've sort of made this, this concept. There's actually going to be two separate videos. This video specifically is going to be about Goku, and then I'm going to be doing another video separately about Vegeta. Um, so I, what I'm going for here for my concept is there's going to be one uh, dual Dokkan Fest, or one Dokkan Fest for Goku, and then one for Vegeta. This is the Goku concept. Uh, there's a lot to go through here, and what my idea was behind this character is this was going to be sort of like a reimagining of the transforming Goku that we got for, I believe, oh boy, I believe it was the 200 million download celebration with the uh, transforming Goku and Frieza. This is like a reimagining of that um, same style of character, except this is a more modern take on it without you having to wait to go through all the forms every single turn. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is Saiyan Raised on Earth LR Goku. Here are her stats here. I mean, this is nothing too crazy. Pretty much based these off of what would be normal stats for a summonable LR these days. And um, this is what I'm probably going to use for the thumbnail as well, but this is what I imagine the art is going to look like. Um, and the, the reason why I decided to do this is because I was inspired by something that Dragon Ball Heroes did. And this is the card that Heroes has in the game. And they... This card has an ability called Climax Change. This card starts as a base form Goku. And then depending on how much uh, battle power you have um, during, I believe it's the second turn, you're going to transform into one of Goku's various forms. So Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, God, or Super Saiyan Blue, or UI. So there's seven different forms, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the same concept I wanted to go with here. You know, seventh anniversary, seven forms of Goku. And um, I'm going to do mine a little bit differently than how Heroes did it, but that's sort of where I got my inspiration from. So let's go scroll through this, and I'll show you guys what exactly this, car this unit's going to be able to do. So leader skill, going with Goku's battle history as the new category for the leader skill, which is basically going to be every single fight that Goku had throughout Dragon Ball. So obviously every single iteration of Goku is going to be on the category. And then every fight that he had, all the enemies are also going to be in that category as well. So, you know, going back all the way to OG Dragon Ball, Goku fought, uh, you know, the initial version of Yamcha. He fought Demon King Piccolo in Dragon Ball Z. He fought Raditz. Then he fought uh, Final Form Frieza and Full Power Frieza. Then he fought Perfect Form Cell. You know, Kid Buu. He fought, like, technically he fought, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, Buu Tanks for a little bit. So all those enemies would also be in this category as well. It's like it's a good homage to Goku and, and the 7th anniversary of this game to sort of go back and look at um, all of Goku's fights that he's had and to sort of encapsulate that in a category. He's also going to be buffing low class warrior and the reason why I went with low class warrior is because I really wanted to although this is not a Saiyan Saga Dokkan fest, I really wanted to have the base form of Goku be like a pseudo throwback to the Saiyan Saga and that's why I went with this pose. This is the pose that he does against Vegeta obviously when he's about to fight him for the first time in, back in the Saiyan Saga. Um, and you know how many times Vegeta called him a low-class warrior back in that fight, so that's why I went with low-class warrior here. So this is going to get the three key boost and attack and defense plus 170%, and then HP plus 130%. I feel like the Goku's battle history category could be actually be really good. Um, it's mostly, again, just going to be Goku's, but you have some villains in there as well. Uh, you'll be able to have some Vegeta's in there, right? You know, Majin Vegeta, the Saiyan Saga Vegeta. Uh, Piccolo's will be in there, and so there's not going to be only villains, but um, a lot of it's going to be Goku's plus, you know, some of his you know, people he sparred with and stuff like that. So they'll all be in this category. So again, I think it's with the seventh anniversary sort of being I, what I consider to be like the climax of Dokkan up until this point. This is a good, I think, throwback to uh, look at Goku and sort of build this category around who Goku is and what made him into what he is. And that's actually a really big part of this unit too. This unit's really... Uh, the reason why I went with this concept for this unit is because I wanted to sort of showcase... Goku's evolution as a character and to throw that all into one unit is not easy to do But I think I was able to do it pretty decently with how I set this unit up So let's go take a look at the passive here. So the passive is extensive combat arsenal 
Uh, he gets attack and defense plus 177% at the start of the turn. Then he gets attack and defense plus 7% per key sphere obtained. This is just this is, this is a start of turn buff. It's not an on super attack buff. Then he gets attack and uh, defense plus 7% per existing enemy. Then he gets attack and defense plus 7% with each attack performed. <clears throat> Max of 77%. And then this last portion is once only activation. He gets key plus 24 and he gets an additional attack and defense plus 177% if a super attack is performed with each of this character's forms within the same battle once only. So you guys will see how this works once we take a look at the super attack effects, but this is pretty much something that you'll see only in long events. But I already think he's definitely good enough with this, plus the super attacks you'll see in a second, to be really, really powerful in short events as well. Obviously went to... Um, Wanted to do a play on the sevens, obviously, with uh, Dokkan always doing that as well. I imagine that <laughs> no matter what the actual um, seventh year anniversary units end up doing, they'll have a ton of sevens in their passives just because it's, you know, what they are probably going to be doing because of the, the word play and number play, stuff like that. They always love doing that. So that's his passive. Uh, he can obviously build up to a ton of attack and defense just based off of this, but the real heart and soul of this unit is coming from the super attacks. This is not really that complicated of a passive. Usually when I do these concept videos, I'm much more innovative when it comes to uh, you know unique and, and different types of mechanics that these units are bringing to the table. This is honestly not that unique and not that innovative, but where the innovation is coming into play is for sure going to be the super attacks. So let's go take a look at the super attacks here. So he has a lot of super attacks. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven super attacks. Each super attack represents one of his forms. Now he's obviously gonna be able to super attack from 12 key, and then he's going to have two, I guess, key where he can do each super attack. So starting from 12 all the way to 24, um, let's just go through this. So uh, when I did my concept video for the Namek Goku and uh, Frieza, I actually ended up playing the super attack clips on the video, and the video got copyrighted. <laughs> So I'm not going to be doing that in this video. I'm just going to be explaining to you guys what the attacks are going to be. So this is the 12 to 13 key super attack. This is the base form Goku. Does the Meteor Rush. So what I have in mind for the super attack in terms of the animation is I'm thinking of the initial fight that Goku had with Vegeta and the Saiyan Saga in the wasteland area, the sort of desert area, the rocky area. Um, sort of like the initial scuffle that they had where Goku you know, launches off of the rock from his iconic pose and they scuffle for a few seconds. And I, I imagine this super attack animation, what I want this to look like is they'll take bits and pieces of that scuffle and turn it into a super attack uh, animation. And what this effect is gonna do is it's just gonna be very simple, uh, infinite stack of attack and defense. And the reason why I made this uh, the way that I did is because this is the super attack you're gonna be getting every time you perform an additional attack. And I feel like this is probably the most beneficial thing that you'd be able to get from an additional attack, just an additional stack of attack and defense for infinite turns, basically. Right? Well, technically 99 turns, but pretty much an infinite stack. So that's why I went with this 12 to 13 key super attack. The 14 to 15 key super attack is going to be the Meteor Smash. This one's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure most of you guys know what the Meteor Smash is, but this is Super Saiyan Goku's attack from when he first went Super Saiyan and attacked Frieza. Now, we already have the Meteor Smash in the game. Uh, this is part of the STR uh, Super Saiyan Goku from his Rage Mode. But I feel like they could definitely do a better job with this in terms of modern 2022 Dokkan animations. Um, there's a few parts of that um, specific combination of attacks that there's not in Dokkan right now. Like, there's a there's a point in that attack where he, like, takes Frieza and he literally smashes him on his knee and stuff like that. So I feel like they can implement some of that in here. Um, but yeah, this is greatly raises attack and defense for three turns and causes colossal damage. So you guys, at this point, you know how effective this is. A greatly raised attack and defense effect for three turns, especially on an LR with stats that this guy has, is going to be really, really good. Um, the 16 to 17 key super attack is the Meteor Crash. Um, this is a Super Saiyan, two, one of Super Saiyan 2 Goku's attacks that he does against Majin Vegeta in their fight. So I think it's like, it's a bunch of like, um, it starts with, I think it starts with a punch, then he like teleports behind them into a kick or something. It's just a, it's a barrage of attacks. I don't exactly remember the like exact amount of attacks they did in, in, in the combination, but I actually had to rewatch all the fights for all these um, all these animations. I, I have them in my head what they look like. I wish I could show you, but I'm just gonna get copyrighted if I do. So uh, the meteor crash massively raises attack and defense for one turn and causes colossal damage. So obviously, um, slightly different effects for this as compared to like this or this. And so the one I was going for with these super deck effects is. It's sort of like a mini game where depending on the situation you want to pick the attack or try your best 
to pick the attack that would give you the best effect for that specific situation that you're in. So for example, if you're um, getting attacked by like like five to seven different attacks in slot one in like the first turn in Super Battle Road, for example, this would be a pretty decent one to grab because you're going to basically double your defense instead of, you know, either slowly stacking it up or um, getting the stack on the Super Saiyan one. So the Super Saiyan 2 one's pretty good, I think, just for that one turn. If you, 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 need, you need, like, defense right now, this is a good one to grab. The 18 to 19 key super attack is the Super Kamehameha. This is Super Saiyan 3 Goku super attack. This one is going to be from his fight against Fat Boo, uh, his initial fight against Fat Boo. And I'm basically imagining, um, if you guys remember the Int transforming Super Saiyan 2 Goku into Super Saiyan 3 Goku Super Attack, the Super Saiyan 3 version, his Super Attack, it's kind of just going to be a renewed version of that. Um, but there's a, there's, I, I don't know if you guys remember the um, the part of that fight where I think it's Blue, uh, Boo is flying towards Goku and Goku knees him in the face and the camera like pans around a little bit. So what I'm imagining for this one is it's going to be Goku knees the enemy in the face, the camera pans around, he kicks them away, and then he does the Kamehameha that he did against Boo. That's what I'm imagining for this one. Um, and this one, he gains a high chance to perform an additional super attack for one turn and causes Mega Colossal damage. So this would actually end up being the uh, this one over here. This assuming you got the additional super attack. So this can actually, if you go for the 18 to 19 key super attack, this one can actually um, end up giving you three additional or three attacks in a total turn right you get this one then you can proc the 50 uh, chance to gain an additional super attack effect from this to get this and then the hidden potential system can grab this as well oh yeah by the way i forgot to mention even though it was coded color wise in the front he is going to be a tech unit i feel like uh, super attack is not in the greatest spot i mean uh, most people would say super physical i actually initially had this guy as super physical but i decided to redo him as tech just because we just got like a monstrous super physical Goku, so I felt like Super Tech was the typing that needed it the most next. So that was Super Saiyan 3 Goku's Super Attack. Next we have Super Saiyan God Goku Super Attack. This is a 20 to 21 key Super Attack. This is going to be the God Shot. This is a play on um, Super Saiyan God Goku's combos that he did versus Kale and Khalifa in the Turner of the Power. I was looking through, because I actually rewatched the Battle of Gods fight versus Beerus. There were a few points in there that I thought could have been good to use, but I feel like the like the little gun attack that he does against Kale and Khalifa, we sort of have a good, um, decent animation of this for the SSR of the LRSTR uh, UI Goku. But this is a really cool attack. I feel like you could start off with like the little finger gun attack and then start going into combos after that, because there's a part in that Super Saiyan God fight with Kale and Khalifa where he's like destroying both Kale and Khalifa with a bunch of melee attacks. So. You could go from a little finger god shot attack into like a bunch of melee attacks, and that would be the super attack effect here, or that would be the super attack animation. So this one causes mega colossal damage and raises allies' attack and defense by 30% for two turns. So if you guys remember um, the LR into Universe 7, Android 17 and Universe 7, they sort of have an effect like this, but there's only for one turn. I wanted to really see, you know, uh, how good this would be if it was two turns. I actually think it would be really good. Um, I don't believe this exists in the game right now. Having an attack and defense by 30% for two turns effect. I believe it's only one turn in the game right now. So uh, two turn effect on this I think would be ridiculously powerful. Um, so this is a good 20 to 21 key effect here. The Super Saiyan Blue super attack is the 22 to 23 key super attack. The Super Dragon Flash. I know a lot of people have been asking for this for a long time. This super attack animation is the quote-unquote one-inch punch that Goku does versus the Golden Frieza in Resurrection F. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be the entire effect, uh, the entire super attack animation, but it'll probably end up being like the one-inch punch into some kind of like Kamehameha or something like that. So, this one is gains a great chance of performing a critical hit for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. So. We saw with the six-year anniversary units, uh, UI Goku and Evolution Blue Vegeta, they have a high chance to do a, a critical hit, both on their 12 and 18 key super attacks, which is a 50% chance. This is a great chance. This is a 70% chance. So, pretty powerful effect on the Super Saiyan Blue one. And then we have UI Goku. UI Goku super attack only, effect, uh, only activates when you have full 24 key. This is the godly display. This is the attack that he does versus Jiren when he first transforms into UI, the mastered white-haired UI Goku, where he sort of like just 
Jiren attacks him, he sticks his arm out, and you just see all the attacks sort of like, I guess, appear on Jiren, like, and he just gets knocked away into the rock, right? That's the attack that this is. That's the animation for this. And we do ha we do kind of have this a little bit with the int transforming UI Goku. Uh, in the first part of his super attack effect, he actually, or the first part of the super attack animation, he actually does that. Um, but I mean, it's <laughs> been many years since that came out, so I feel like we could definitely get a better ver a better version of this with. Um, uh, 2022 animation here, right? That unit first came out right after the third year anniversary, so it's been almost four years ago. All right, so this super attack effect is really ridiculous. So he gains a high chance to evade enemies' attacks. So that's for one turn. That's that's for one turn. And he reveals the location of enemy super attacks for two turns, starting from the following turn, and does mega colossal damage. So what this basically does is, from the next turn after this guy does a super attack. You're going to have the ability to see the location of enemy super attacks for that turn, plus the next turn that this guy's on rotation. So what you can actually do, is the way I envision this um, being uh, very useful, is you want to get the 24 key super, and then you probably want to get something else on the following turn, because you are, you're already going to have the effect active for that turn, so you know where the super attacks are going to be. And then the next time he comes on rotation, if the enemies are still alive, you can choose to either go for you know this one, or you can go for the massive raids if you're getting attacked a lot. Uh, you can get the, go for the additional attacks. There's a lot of different things you can try and do. Um, and I think a lot of times you're probably going to be at the mercy of the orb field. Um, so you're not always going to have like, you know, oh, I want to choose this one or this one or this one. You're not, you're not always going to have like the freedom of choice to choose whatever you want to do. But because there are seven different attacks here, each of them are going to transform you into a different version of Goku. I feel like this is like honestly the ideal way of doing the multi transformation like we saw with the transforming Goku and Frieza and Vegeta instead of having to wait all those turns to get all the way to your final form. Um, because technically you could get UI Goku turn one if you want if you got 24 key with him. Um, now I intentionally didn't give him any key in his passive because well, besides this last part, right? So now you guys understand how to get this last part, right? You have to do a super attack with each of these forms. So it's going to take a long time. I mean, the first one doesn't really matter because you can get that with an additional attack at any point, right? But you can get, you need, you need to use this one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So you need to basically do six supers before, <laughs> before you get this active. But once you get this active, you pretty much just kill anything that's on the battlefield, right? You're going to have this fully built up by then. And uh, you can pretty much get a lot of key. We'll go into the active skill in a second, but you'll be able to get a lot of key spheres as well. Um, but this, to me, is like the ultimate homage to how, like Goku as a character, being able to go through all of his forms and see like the iconic moments from all of his fights where his forms were being used in those fights. All right, so here's the active skill. The active skill is the teachings of the Seven Grand Masters. This is sort of where I'm tying in the uh, promotion that they're doing in the game right now, the Seven Grand Masters thing. So. The effect is randomly changes a type of key sphere other than rainbow to rainbow key sphere. So he's going to change a random type of orb to rainbow. Then he's going to gain an additional key in addition when collecting rainbow key spheres during the turn. So basically, he is, becomes a rainbow orb changer for one turn, and he's going to get an additional key whenever he picks up a rainbow key sphere. So the purpose of this active skill is to be able to get him the UI Goku super attack very, very easily. Um, and I actually, <laughs> the funny thing about this is I actually took inspiration of this from the manga. And if you guys remember how Goku transformed into UI Omen in the manga, he sort of like remembered back to all the different teachers that he's had. Um, and that sort of triggered the UI transformation. And so the, uh, the, the uh, active skill animation for this would be sort of like, like two second flashbacks to each of the seven Grand Masters. And he'd be saying this voice down here, um, and that sort of is going to quote unquote trigger his UI Goku super attack because it'll be super easy to get this. That's mean you don't get really unlucky. Um, and the condition for this is going to be able to be used when HP is 77% or below, or after seven turns have elapsed from the start of battle. So it's pretty easy to get 77% uh, or below is pretty easy, um, and you can use it twice in a battle. So you can. <laughs> get the rainbow orb changing plus extra key from rainbow orbs twice in a battle. Um, or if you end up never falling below 77% HP, you can wait after seven turns and you're able to use it just without any other conditions being fulfilled either. 
All right, and then finally we have the links and categories. So links are all in the family. Sane Lineage, Common Mahazi, Fighter, Sane Warrior Race, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. I actually intentionally did not give him Shocking Speed or Prepare for Battle. Uh, his only key link is going to be uh, Saiyan Lineage. And the reason why I did that is because, again, uh, the point of this unit is not to come out turn one and just start throwing out 24 key super attacks like they're nothing, right? You're supposed to be strategically using the orb field to pinpoint the super attacks that you want to get with him. Um, and uh, I feel like if you had links like all in the, or not all in the family, if you had links like Shocking Speed, Prepare for Battle, stuff like that, it would sort of allow you to bypass a lot of these super attacks, and that's not really what I'm going for for the design of this unit. Um, and then again, with the um, passive skill, the ultimate goal, assuming you're in a longer event, is to get this. And um, you definitely also want to pick up a lot of key sphere. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this is also a really good um, ability that synergizes well with the, um, the active skill, obviously, because you're going to be rainbow orb changing and then getting additional key, so... The more orbs you get, the more powerful you're going to be. And I also put this in here as well, the sort of like nuking style passive effect here. I put that in because I wanted to make it feel like you're getting more powerful with the higher key that you have, right? So if you're only collecting like one key sphere, you're going to be doing like the lowest form attack, which is just his base form. And you're only going to be getting um, one key sphere. So he's only going to be getting an additional 7% attack and defense. Whereas, for example, if you're using the active skill, and you're collecting like 13 key spheres, you're gonna be getting the UI Goku active skill, and you're gonna be getting like, what is that, 91% <laughs> extra attack and defense because of this part of this passive. So I kind of wanted the uh, stronger forms of Goku to actually feel stronger, which is why I put that in there. Um, and that's the way, I, that's the reason why I designed the links like this and why I didn't give him a lot of key links. Categories are going to be Low Class Warrior, Pure Saiyan, Goku's Family coming out, Turtle School, Bond of Friendship. And for this specific unit, I know usually they don't like to do this, but for my concept, I'm definitely <laughs> hoping that they would do this if they decided to do, go down this path. Uh, for these characters that don't actually transform, but they transform through their super attacks, I am going to put them on Transformation Boost, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, 3, and Realm of Gods. I just think it makes the most sense because the whole point of the unit is to use all of his forms. So I think he should be on these categories. And then obviously, lastly, he's going to be on Goku's Battle History, the new category that I came up with. So let me know down below how you guys, uh, what you guys think about this sort of like new concept that I came up with. It's technically not a new mechanic in the game. It's just sort of making use of like the OG, I guess Tech Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks was the first unit to really introduce different super attacks within the same unit, right? That wasn't an LR. Because his 11 key and 12 key and I believe it was 9 to 10 key super attacks were all different. They had different effects on them. But this is sort of taking it to the next level and I feel like this is a good way to not have to sit through every single form. Like, like you're not starting off with base form, then next you're transforming to Super Saiyan, then you're transforming to Super Saiyan 2, then Super Saiyan 3, and then it's just very like monotonous and mundane. I feel like going through one by one all these forms. This one sort of gives you more freedom to choose what you want to do depending on how many key spheres you actually get. And um, I feel like the payoff is really good as well. Uh, obviously, you can choose what effect you want. And um, the more attacks you do, the stronger you're going to get. The more key spheres you get, the stronger you're going to get. And then the ultimate goal, again, is to get this. And you just kill everything instantly. And again, a really good, I think, um, sort of tribute, I would say, to Goku and his journey throughout Dragon Ball through Dragon Ball Super. Um, and I will get on the Vegeta one. I haven't actually finished the Vegeta one yet, but this is the first one I wanted to put out, and I want to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on this concept. In terms of if I think this is actually going to happen, probably not. It's probably going to show me fusions, right? <laughs> it's probably just going to be like Vegito and Gogeta or something like that. But to me, this would make a more thematically appropriate 7th year anniversary for Dokkan. And uh, for me, this is something that I would definitely summon on. So hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you all in the next one.